into Narc Abuse TV Network. It is a Friday here in Southern California in an undisclosed location in which you get to hear free TV. Peace to you, Sharky. Thank you, everyone else. Catherine is here. Veronica619. Thank you, Veronica. One of our loyal supporters to the show. Free TV is on the air for the second show that is happening today. Three all together. We just completed one with Natasha. Leadership and the pos possibilities of being positive and leading in peace. Right now we're going to talk with Sabine. Then we'll have Leon, Leon Walker, and we'll be discussing narcissism. We appreciate everything that uh, you have been doing for us, my daughters and myself, when we put this on. They are my executive producers, just in case you're coming here for the first time and don't know. This is Free TV here on Instagram, who has welcomed us for what we're doing, which we discuss narcissism, relationships, and recovery. We lean toward the recovery more than anything else. So if you want to lean into the strength that is inside of you, and you want an example of uh, what that kind of looks like, that's my guest that's coming on next. I could tell you a whole lot more, but if you don't know, first time here, the show is not about me. None of us shows, almost 400 shows that we've been doing in about 16 months. So let's get to it. Let's get to our guests. You're going to enjoy this. Trust me. You're going to like this. We did it. <laughs> you okay there? Yeah. I just want to make sure I can hear you comfortably. It seems to be cutting in and out when you go to speak. So, uh, are you using a mic there or no? I didn't. I didn't double check. Say it again. Um, I am trying to. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, go ahead and keep speaking because it keeps cutting out and I don't know what it is. Are you on Bluetooth by any chance or no? Yeah. No? Yeah. 
Say that again. Say that again. Say so. I just go ahead and keep talking. Can you hear me? Oh, now it's perfect. I don't know what just happened, but that. But I cannot really. I cannot hear you. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So let's do this. Um, is the Bluetooth on that you have there? Hold on. Because it may need to be off. Are you? Can you hear me now? Oh, it has to be off. Oh wait, hold on a second. You just have to keep talking. I can. I just keep talking in that way. I can get a pretty good idea of what's what. Can uh, you hear me? Okay. So, is the Bluetooth on right now? It's off. The Bluetooth is off. Okay, I can hear you comfortably right now, but can you hear me though? But I hear. I cannot hear you on the head. I cannot hear. Yeah. You. You can take those off. Take those off and see if you can still hear me. Oh, can you hear me comfortably right now? Yes, absolutely. Is that much? All yes. right, we're we're cooking now. Hey, we're cooking with grease right now. We we we're <laughs> cooking. We, we cooking. We gonna we gonna flip some fried chicken in there pretty in a minute. So okay. So can you still comfortably hear me now? Um, I can hear you. I can see you. I can feel you. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute now. Now you scare me. I didn't know I had that much power. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, if you get, I'm way over here. You can feel. What else can I do from way over here? Can I control your finances? No, just I'm just joking. Listen, um, I just want to let you know. I believe in the process. Everybody here is uh, jumping in. Uh, chop it up with podcasts and a few other people. Free, uh, free your beautiful soul. Uh, Sharky uh, and others are here. Uh, Sabine, uh, there you go. Look, can you see what's on the screen? Do you see what they say about? You? Yes, I saw. I see that. <laughs> okay, you, you got love. And, and thank you very much for taking time during your busy day and supporting me, uh, trying to help other people to overcome. And basically, my mission right now is to give hope. You know, spread positivity, and we all have certain things to overcome in life, and we it's possible to move on and live a happy life. I love it. I love it. Okay, so if anybody's wondering, this is why I wanted her on the show. Look at me, grinning from ear to ear. You ooze with energy and positivity. Yes. And I find you extremely encouraging every time you have something to say. Yeah. Even when you're not speaking, just right now, you're encouraging to look at because, uh, I mean, I've only touched on a little bit uh, of, of your story, your life, because I never like to know too much before I do a show, just enough, and then we do the show. The little bit that you touched on, you know, very minute in our show prep, is enough that I knew this is a perfect fit for our show. Um. Do me a huge favor. Bear with me because I want to start a certain way, okay? And this is what I want to do. I want to ask you first. Do you ever go to bed? <laughs> <laughs> do you ever sleep? <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's the truth, you know. I, oh, okay. One, two, three hours. I'm trying to, you know, get more sleep, but uh, I... I from fibromyalgia so that that's part of oh. them that I Wait. yeah but the funny thing is that people watch me on Instagram and on my stories and they always say you know we're getting exhausted <laughs> just watch <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey. hosting and that is the same thing you know are you ever sleeping and I just have a lot of energy you know okay fibromyalgia Yes. How has that impacted your life? Well, I have it since a very long time, since over 25 years. It's a, it's a pain syndrome, you know, so no matter how you look and what you dress and how old you are, it doesn't matter. It is how you feel. Nobody can really see chronic pain and only somebody who has chronic pain on a daily basis can understand somebody else, you know, so it affects Every part of your life, you know, when you have pain and um, you just want to crawl up in bed and, and, and have it end, you know, 
but I found natural ways to deal with it. I was for a long time at all kinds of different medications. And I was mm -hmm. cycle, you know, that you go to the doctor, they give you medications, it, it doesn't try, you try some other medication, maybe different types of medication for the nerve pain. But what ultimately helped me is very, first of all, you need to exercise, you know, I go every day to the gym, try at least 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour, eat very healthy, only, only organic, whenever it's possible, you know, mm -hmm. lots of vegetables, some protein, very simple diet. And the most important thing is to the peace of mind, surrounding yourself with positive people, you know, where you have inner peace. And that's mm -hmm. cutting out all the negative people, you know? So that's what I did in my life, very radical. So, so not having uh, in your close connection of people, negative people. Yes, extreme. Now, we're going to, people are going to say, yeah, we all, you know, can run into negative people. But you're talking about having a lifestyle that has people that are close to you being positive. Yes, very important. I had to make a radical change about two and a half years ago in my life when I realized that I was always the doormat of everybody else. And I was all of a sudden, I realized that I was in, a, in an abusive relationship. Basically, yeah. it happened that people around me acted, um, you know, like certain politicians. And I started Googling it, what a narcissist is, because this is what a psychiatrist uh, said. And yeah. I started realizing once I was on the internet and I, it was, it was like an epiphany. My life yeah. was of me, you know? Wow. Once I realized what was going on in my life, in my marriage with my best friends, it, I, once you realize it, you can never go back. You know, you have to make certain changes in your life. When it, when it comes to that moment or those moments that started to build where you started to go, wait a minute, this is my life that I'm reading about. Was it emotionally very difficult to accept? Absolutely. Absolutely. It was, well, it's, it's, a, it's a mix of emotions. First, you're okay. shocked. Then you find validation. It's like, yes, this is exactly what I'm going through. You know, I mean, every point I could check off at, at the narcissist oh. list and what I'm going through emotionally and financially, you know, all these different emotional abuse, financial abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse. And I realized that it is not just my, my ex-husband, it is also three of my best friends. You wow. Know? Yes, female... So you know, so. Female and male friends. Yes. yes. We're showing the same thing. Did, you literally were what you just said then, a doormat. Yes, yes, exactly. But I was programmed from a very early childhood on oh. to accept this behavior. And I found that out in, in therapy, why I would accept the behavior like that. And I would really recommend that to a lot of people Hopefully they can afford it. Sometimes they have free programs and sometimes it's part of the health insurance. Try to get help with somebody who is specialized on narcissistic abuse. I now, had for a long time. You, you had help in moving to where you are right now, but what was it like that moment you started to recognize? You said, would you say it was early in your life? It's almost, I want to say the word groomed, but not, but not maybe not the right word, but you accepted this behavior, not just because it happened to you in, a, in your adult life. You're saying this is connected to before you even met the narc? Yes, exactly. In therapy, the most, the most important question for me was, you know, how was your childhood? How was your, rela your relationship with your parents? You know, and I realized that my mom was an empath and she 
always um, said that, you know, she was afraid that people would be jealous of my achievements in school and about my, my looks. And she always downplayed me, you know, that I'm nothing special, it's okay. And my father had narcissistic traits. He always loved being the center of attention and he was very egotistical. It's, um, you, he was in public very charming, very funny, um, very charismatic, but at home, uh, it's the Jacqueline Hyde. At home he was, um, yeah, very egoistic and he was just uh, about, himself you know i mean i love my parents dearly we were really best friends but some mm. um, narcissistic traits there right there when it comes to the relationship that you you had uh and you started to recognize that there were parts of it that were showing uh, itself to be emotionally unstable or not not beneficial to you it was narcissistic and your friends were treating you a certain way, and you recognizing these traits were not were not positive. They were not good. Yes. What What's the first few steps that you made to get to where you are now? What are the first things that you started to do? Have a conversation about it. Uh, what What did you do? Yeah, I tried to have a conversation about it, but uh, a lot of people will know that once you have a conversation about it and you try to explain your feelings and your opinions, with a narcissist, it really doesn't matter uh, was being played off and he was playing the victim. And so I basically had to do a lot of soul searching. And what I did is I put a list down, you know, mm -hmm. a list let's say about my marriage and a list with my friends and I put okay. the, the positive and the negative. What do I get out of this relationship? What is the truth of this relationship? And I was very, very honest with myself. You know, you cannot change another person, but you can analyze who you are and in what kind of a relationship you are and mm -hmm. When I was writing down the positivity, positive things were much smaller compared to the negative things, you know. Wow. And once it stares you on a piece of paper without emotion, then yeah. you realize where you are, where you're standing, you know. Yeah, I was going to ask you what you just talked about right now. Uh, what was that like looking at that on paper? I mean... Did you at least come up with maybe five or ten positives? Yes, I for each category. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I had a couple of uh, positive things, yes, but the negative things were just really outweighing the positivity. You know, like more than more than more than ten, huh? <laughs> well, well, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't mean to be laughing, but I'm. I mean to be laughing because. Once we look at it and then look back, it goes like, wow. But in the moment, did you feel a measure of disgust when you looked at what you were really involved in and you saw it on paper? Disgust is not the word. It is repulsing. And uh, it was such a terrible time in my life. It was all these negative feelings. It was just when you are with somebody for 26 years, you know, it is such a heart-wrenching truth and that he was the love of my life you know so but looking at the truth i really had to do what i had to do you know so filed the for divorce you know when when a person starts to recognize that they've had a background be, uh, before they became an adult in their family life or if they have recognized that they're dealing with someone who is narcissistic in their treatment of them, they're treating them in a very well bad way, emotionally unavailable way. Should that person feel that it's their fault because maybe their upbringing or they didn't recognize it, the red flags? What's your viewpoint? No, I don't think that uh, it was not, it is not the empath's fault at all. All. It was not my fault. I had to realize that I, as a person, I am okay. I'm a good person.
person has nothing to do with me, what all these things that were happening to me, that were being said to me, that were being done to me, has nothing to do with me. It's not, mm -hmm. not at all. I am basically, I was the victim of that, you know? And I trans was able to transform myself out of the victim role into a survivor role and into a warrior role. About yeah. steps that I'm talking about now, it takes time to yeah. get out of the victim role, you know, but it is not, it's not, was not my fault at all that it happened to me. No, no, not at all. So your acceptance of what was happening, it literally had to be, what was the expression? It had to be some type of radical acceptance, as it were. You, you had to just lean into it instead of just seeing it and then lingering. You said, no, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm dealing with. Let me see if I can talk about it. And then you got pushback on that or stonewalling. And if nothing was going to take place. So there was a measure of radical acceptance for you to start to move towards some type of a principles of life to live by now? Yes, absolutely. It's the radical acceptance. It's the allowing yourself to feel all these negative feelings. You are really at the bottom of your life. You are feeling so horrible. I, I cannot even explain it. I have to drink something. You know, so that... When it comes to your, you're trying to explain it. Have you gotten better over time trying to explain it? Yes. Basically, it's, I really, really accepted what happened to me. Yes. Okay. Like Got I said, it. nothing to do with me as a person. I'm a good person. Things yeah. me. Yes, I accepted. I dealt with it. And it was time to forgive myself, first of all, for not being educated enough, not knowing red flags of a relationship, not knowing green flags of a relationship. I wish it at an earlier age, some, some psychology, then I would have not been in this kind of situation. And I would recommend to everybody to, to get educated, to take a couple of courses in psychology, to understand what you're dealing with. And basically, it's the acceptance and then forgiveness for myself and forgiveness for others. Because I looked at it, what really helped me was that I looked at it that I am dealing with people who have a personality disorder. It's, it's just really a part of the brain that's missing, the feeling, empathy, and all that. This is, so I always tell saying, you know, if somebody would have a heart attack and lay in the hospital, I cannot get angry because he has a heart attack. So I am not going to get angry at a personality disorder, you know? Oh, wait, wait, time out. Oh, time out. That was really good. Hold on a second. Repeat that. If a person is in the hospital and they have a heart attack. Yes. You're not going to what? I'm not going to go in the hospital and get angry at that person and say, you know what? You're laying in bed. You have a heart attack, and I would get angry at that. And this is how I translated it to the narcissistic abuse that I was experiencing, knowing that it is a personality disorder. So it's to me, I don't know if it is politically correct, but I always said to me, to myself, you're dealing with a mentally uh, distorted kind of a sick person so i cannot expect a healthy response and i am not going to get mm. angry at that it of course at the beginning i felt all these feelings anger and betrayal and hurt and all that but it really helped me knowing that this is a personality this dis disorder you know if that's the case, then it became clear that you were in a position where it's kind of like, you know, how can I say this? Homie, don't play that. You were kind of at that point. <laughs> uh, I have no common sense today. What? Say that again. Monday videos. Uh, this is exactly what I said. Homie, don't play that, you know? <laughs> Oh, by, oh by, by the way, you tell everybody what you do on Mondays. 
by the way, because, you know, I, first of all, let me say this before you go. I am honored that you even took the time to be on this show uh, because you are such a popular person uh, and an interviewer in the rap community, <laughs> in the music. So, and uh, what you connected with, it, correct me if I'm wrong, you connected with Chance TV, if I got that correct, or if I host for Chance TV and I'm hosting for Music Monday videos and it was so funny when I auditioned you know I'm a, I'm a German girl you know blonde <laughs> but I am very well I'm very familiar with the African-American <laughs> side two black husbands I have three black children I mean looking at me nobody would expect that so I since the, the 80s and 90s, I am involved in the hip hop community, in the rap community. Music is live music, it's my life. So <laughs> yes. Yeah. In my videos, there I had to, it was a cold read, you know, meaning they, they gave me yeah. something to talk about, you know, and I wrote the script myself on the spot, and it was basically. Wow. Um, a musician that in the 60s went to South Africa and he looked outside uh, before he was performing live and he saw that the audience was segregated and he said, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm out. And he did not perform. And I added, homie, don't play that. <laughs> so, that guy. <laughs> uh, you, I was waiting to bring this up just so you could talk about it. Yes. Because you... You got the part, and others probably were surprised that you got the part. Not really, right? I, I was <laughs> because I live. I love. Um, I'm very influenced by the hip hop society. You know, I I dress like that. I feel it. I had the greatest love I've ever gotten in my whole life was from African Americans. It's very. It's just. We, we feel each other, you know? So, so, so essentially, if there was no J-Lo, there would be Sabine. Yes, 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 she's my <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Beyonce, J-Lo, oh my gosh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, sometimes I do my research. Not always, but sometimes I do my research. So I was going to say this. When it comes to your life, you have some way of navigating your life now. Now. Yeah. I'm going to say, based upon our show prep that we did, you have principles of life, right? Um, Twelve yes. of them. Yes. We, we talked a little bit, of course, in preparation for the show. Our shows are not scripted, if anybody's wondering. Uh, there is no script to follow. Uh, but there are certain guidelines that you, you know, work by in order to get to where you are now, not to put all your energy into the behavior of someone else, but you started focusing on yourself. Yes. Absolutely. Leaning into that, right? But you got you got principles of life, 12 of them. Yes. So er everybody that's watching, uh, one, we've gone 28 minutes, not even a full 30 minutes. We're about to get into some principles of life. And then we're going to end the show um, in a little bit because she's coming back two more times. So don't think you're going to get all 12 today because we don't have enough time to really break each one of them down. We're going to talk about four of them right now. And if you want to hear the other eight, da -da -da, you got to come back. You got to come back when Sabine is on to yeah. get them. Uh, we're going to break these uh, 12 up into three different shows. Uh, today, of course, we're doing a show. We're going to talk about those four things that you can literally take notes to keep in mind that she wants to pass on. So that you can show your strength. That's what the show is all about. Uh, Sabine was, has been able to show her strength despite the actions and reactions of others and, and rise above it. And that's what I wanted her on for. So that you can understand that you have it within yourself, the strength to rise above whatever someone has done to you or is doing to you. And, well, homie, don't play that. So, so I, just love, I just love hearing you can you say it again for me, please? Just say it again. I got to hold my cup is set, and then it looks better. Okay. Okay. Homie, don't play that. <laughs> <laughs> I just love when you say 
I don't know what's wrong with me, but when you say that, that should be like on every, that should be at the end of just about every commercial. <laughs> it should be, it should, they should, that should, somebody should record that. I'm going to see if I can keep, find a way to record that and put it on my, put it on my console, one of my buttons and I can push it and just have you, I may have to, you may have to put it in a voice note and send it to me or something. We got to work that out because I want to have that as a, one of my buttons to just push that. Say, homie, don't play that. But you say it, but you say it. Uh, I just love it. I just love it with the German accent. That is just awesome. Okay, so the uh, twelve the twelve principles of life that you are highlighting to everyone to show that they can show their strength uh, and become the Wonder Woman, uh, their own Wonder Woman, uh, the Wonder Woman that you are. I just love that too. By the way, I had a lot of Wonder Woman uh, postings that I was going to make for you, but we didn't have we didn't have enough time. Uh, but I was going to I was going to put your your face on top of the Wonder Woman body, and then I went like, "That's not fair." <laughs> I might as well just. So, if you have any Wonder Woman uh, outfits, we're gonna have to we have to work that out because uh, you are indeed a Wonder Woman. You really are. Uh, one of my favorite movies, by the way. But uh, I really appreciate it. I'm gonna run through a couple of points here that I'm gonna highlight to everybody. But first, I'll say this: uh, the homie don't play that. Second. You will be here on November the 12th, and you will be back again on November the 19th uh, at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You will be back two more times to discuss the principles of life. Each show will discuss four of them. Uh, today we're going to uh, cover four. But I want to mention this third thing. It's not your fault is one of the things you wanted me to highlight to everybody. Yes. Two... It's important to have some radical acceptance. It may not be comfortable, but you're going to have to radically accept what has taken place uh, to you or someone is doing to you. Letting go uh, any negative uh, mindset and thought that can hold you back. And you, you also wanted to highlight something else. You mentioned what to ask the question, what makes you happy? Yes, this is one of the most important questions in order to let go, at least for me. Once I was able to accept what happened and forgive, then I asked myself the question, what makes me happy? Not don't do always what makes other people happy. What makes me happy? And what makes me happy is live music, you know, of course, you know, all, all the family and the friends, you know, all that. Of course, I, without a doubt. Is live music. When I don't need a psychiatrist or a psychologist because I go to live concerts. I have a lot of live uh, musicians and I get a lot of love. And the way music makes me feel, the way fashion makes me feel. You know, in, before I go to an event, I get very quiet. I put on the eyelashes, the makeup, the hair extensions, mm -hmm. the jewelry. Mm -hmm. This is, and then I start feeling, you know, an outfit. I start feeling colors, and this is what makes me happy. I love connecting with people. I love meeting people. I love mm -hmm. talking, you know. Okay. This is find out what makes you happy. Is it yoga? Is it nature? Is it animals is it sport of course animals make me totally happy that's why i'm cat sitting sitting i cannot have responsibility at home with my own pet but find out what makes you happy and do a lot of these things you know this is how you change your life yeah. not living off of someone else's decision as yeah. to what makes you happy as one as as one of my guests put it, she said she she watched this certain program all the time with her abuser, but she never liked the program. You but see? she made herself believe she liked the program. Yeah. Until he walked out on her. Yes. And then she started reviewing everything that she was doing, and she was really just being a robot. Everything was automatic, but she didn't even like certain foods. She didn't. She started buying groceries the way she wanted to. She started literally picking out outfits that she thought complemented her and her taste 
it was amazing to hear her talk about how freeing it was yes. uh, that literally that he walked out on her. You know, at the moment, of course, it, she felt one way about it. She picked herself up, as it were, uh, from what she was doing before she met him. Because she was going somewhere before she met him. Mm -hmm. And she it's just amazing to hear to hear you say what you're mentioning right now about what makes you happy uh, when it comes to your life, when it comes to who you are right now. What four principles out of the 12 principles do you want to start at the beginning? What principles come into play at the beginning of making better choices, decisions, what makes you happy, to put you where you are right now. Out of those 12 principles, what comes into play? Let's talk about those. Yeah. For me, the most important was that I put my needs at number one. All my life, I put my parents' needs, my husband's needs, my children's needs first, and I was at all the way at the end. I had to examine and uh, change my life in every little decision. I ask myself, what do I get out of it? Um, does this benefit my life? Do I really want that? I had to put myself first. I call it the healthy egoism. I had to learn to say no to certain things. You know, I had to learn how to love myself. I had to realize that I'm a goddess. I did not know that I was a goddess, you know, to <laughs> wear all these eyelashes and hair extensions and, uh, you know, love and doing whatever I want to do. I always had to cater to somebody else, you know. So I made myself priority number one. I mean, this is something I still struggle sometimes, you know, because people, a lot of people want uh, things from me. But I, every time I do something, I ask myself, do I really want that? Is this benefiting me? And yeah. self number one in my own life. When, when you don't make yourself number one, just describe, let's say there's some young woman listening to this. I don't know. She could be 16, 17, 21, 22. Let's just say she's young. A lot of young people are now watching these shows. And let's say she's listening to you say that, but she struggles with it too. And, what does it feel like when you don't make yourself a priority? If you had to describe emotionally and what it's like mentally and emotionally mainly, what is it like when you don't make yourself the priority? It is very draining. You know, all the positivity energy that you should use for yourself, you're using for somebody else. And at the end, you feel drained and depleted and unsatisfied. And unsatisfied. That's a good way. To, I, like, I like that. Okay, so to avoid that unsatisfaction, a person needs to lean into making themselves a priority and taking care of. Uh, I'm I, hopefully I'm reading this this right because I got some of the notes here. I love yourself first. Is that correct, Marie? Okay, uh, make yourself uh, a number one. You deserve to be happy and loved. Healthy ego, ego, right? Egotism, right? I call it healthy egoism. You know, what okay, I ego okay. I've made a list with all my oh. personality traits, you know, yeah. and the negative, of course, uh, nobody is perfect, but I realized that I'm a good person. There's nothing wrong with me. You know, yeah. I'm reacting to certain abuse situations, but it has nothing to do with me. I'm a good person. I think I'm, I'm I great. I really like myself, you know? Hey, I like, hey, I like you. Other <laughs> all these people that have shown up for the live like you too, because all they saw was a picture of you and your name and they're showing up. So, so they, they like you too. I, when it comes to people not liking someone, and I just want to touch on this before we have to go. We've gone, we've gone 39 minutes, but I want to, I want to touch on this. Now, I think it's, we're going to talk about it later, maybe in the next show. But when, when other people don't like, let's, I'm going to use me. Yes. Somebody doesn't like me. Mm -hmm. 
I got a choice how I'm going to approach that. What would be your recommendation to me if I'm going like, man, they don't like me, Sabine? What's your what's your pep talk and advice to me? Well, you know, you cannot be liked by everybody. You know, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with me. If you don't like me, then there's the problem is within that other person. If it's not being, if you're not being liked or appreciated, uh, somebody else will like and appreciate you. Then that's true. <laughs> move on. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no no. Obi, don't play this. <laughs> Obi, I'm not going to spend all day for trying to make you like me if you don't like me. Somebody else will appreciate me. Yes. When you, when you started to recognize other people appreciated you more than the negative friends, negative relationships, what was that like for you? When you started recognizing, well, over here they like me, but I go over here, they beat me up. And they're supposed to be the people close to me and know me longer. But these people I just met, they see the positive qualities that I have. Something's wrong with this picture. Yes, this is this is the hardest decision of my life to end these friendships and to end the marriage because I was basically all alone. All alone. Um, just I just had my children, you know, that I had to take care of. You know, there were teenagers at oh. that time. But basically, nobody had my back. My parents were passed away. My friends and family oh, wow. in Germany. I lived wow. alone here in New York City. You know, I moved there because of my ex-husband. And it, it turns out that they were all of his friends because I moved into his circle. So I had nobody. And it is okay to be alone it is a soul searching time you know don't be afraid to be alone it is okay deal with yourself you know lick your your emotional wounds get therapy you know mm -hmm. move on and put yourself out there and make new friends no matter what age you are you can be in your 20s 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. You are yep. able to make new friends who appreciate you on a completely different level. Right. Put, putting your, that is so wonderfully said by you. I truly, well, matter of fact, it just popped up on the screen. Uh, BK, uh, B, uh, Treese, uh, I probably ruined your name there. Please forgive me. She says 100%. She agrees with you 100%. Putting yourself out there making sure to move forward and move on. All those things are essential uh, for your emotional well-being instead of being stuck trying to make, well, <laughs> trying, to, trying to open up uh, a relationship or have a relationship with somebody um, who is not willing to be open and appreciate you uh, yep. can be extremely painful. Uh, you but um, somebody to go have, ahead. You cannot Say it again. You, if they don't love you, if they don't appreciate you, you cannot force your way into it. It's not possible, you know. And and that and that needs to. It's so it's simple what you're saying, but it needs to be said, because yeah. some people really, and it, it it can apply to men or women, but sometimes a woman can find herself trying to make that man like her or want her, and uh, as as my father would say, if he don't want you, he don't want you. When it's, a man wants something, you'll know when a man wants something. Yes. He, he can't help but be around you. And we're yeah. not talking a stalker. We're talking a balanced uh, man. But, but if a person needs to make new friends, no matter what the age, but you said it right, they have to put themselves out there. They have to meet individuals just in yeah. the process of life. Uh, and you'll be surprised how many people will pick up on your positive qualities that the other person never appreciated. It doesn't mean they didn't see them. It's, they may have saw them. They just didn't appreciate them or they didn't want to be around them. Uh, and uh, if it wasn't for some of the parts of life that you have already gone through, you and I probably would have never met. So I, I'm happy that, that we met. Um, I'm going to ask you this before we have to go. Here you go. Three questions. Never, yeah. Oh, wait. We're going to say four because somebody has a question here on the screen that I need to pull up. Let me just see what it says first. Uh, how did you overcome this situation? And what advice can you give others 
is uh, enchanted by uh, Karmisha. How did you overcome this situation and what advice do you give others? Go ahead and uh, answer that. We've, we've kind of talked about it so far, but yes. uh, go ahead and touch on anything you want to and then I have some other things for you. Basically, once you realize it on an intellectual level, <clears throat> what are you going through? You know, try to put your emotions aside. Try to really see this is what I'm going through. Write it down. Realize it and accept it. And knowing that there's nothing wrong with me, that this is somebody else's perspective and treatment of me and it is not accepted anymore. You know, it has to stop at a certain point. And for me, what was the uh, moment where I really had to end the marriage is that I realized I am a mother first. I'm first. I realized something that <clears throat> a client of mine said 25 years ago. She said, Men come and go in your life. You can never replace a child. And at that point that I was in my life, I had to protect my son, you know? Mm. And that's when I made that change. And I said, you know what? This is unacceptable. You know, I'm a mother first. And once the accepting comes, and there has to be a consequence. Every action has a consequence, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, and then I moved into the steps of, after the acceptance, the consequence, that, uh, you know, the filing for the, mm -hmm. the ending the friendship. Right. So it's forgiving myself for ex allowing myself to be treated like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Without somebody else to treat me this way. And so I forgave myself, I forgave others, and... I realized that I am a goddess. I released my inner Sasha fears. <laughs> that point to realize that every woman and every uh, person has an inner goddess inside. And let it out and celebrate yourself and celebrate every single day of your life. You know, live it to the fullest. You were, you were holding in a lot of strength that you're showing now and right now at this moment sharing with others uh, because I know who's here and watching the show uh, you're sharing your strength with others but you're encouraging others to now do the same right yes absolutely absolutely yes it don't hold it back or sweep it under the rug and you can't expect everyone to accept your strength because you're you're making people better as we're talking the ones that are keep entering the live and are watching this. There are nuggets of information you're passing on that's helping others to show their strength. Yes, it is in a strength. That is true. But everybody can come to that point. Do soul searching. Like I said, find out who you are, what you want in life, and what you want and what you need is not necessarily always the same thing. That's a very important point as well, that find out what is good for you, what you need, not just what you want. What do you really need to be happy? And fulfill your life and bring more of the happy things, the happy people, you know? And instead of living in the past, I know, yeah, I, I decided not to live in the past anymore. <laughs> I wow. Not worry about the future, and I decided to just live right now in the moment, all the time, mm. feel the moment, and love the present. Uh, love the present. Oh man, you you need a you need a shirt that says that. But that should be that should be a thing. That's homie. Don't play that, and live <laughs> in the moment. <laughs> Seriously, I, I love the moment. The the we're gonna have more moments together, but the moment you decided and it felt like it was something that you could say yes to and do this show and you and i spend time together and now we're going to spend three shows together without a doubt looking forward to the other two you decided to do this show what is it that you wanted to accomplish by touching on part of your story but really discussing your recovery of from people mistreating you 
essentially abusing you, not recognizing your value. So many people live and they don't get recognized for the value they bring because there was someone who doesn't appreciate them or is unthankful. What did you want to accomplish today by being here and sharing your strength in part of your story? The main message for me today is I'm trying to give people hope. I'm trying to give everybody hope that men and women who have experienced uh, similar situations mm-hmm. possible that after abuse that you're living a happy fulfilled life i'm trying to give everybody hope and it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman it doesn't matter what age you are you know i'm trying to give hope i'm trying to help somebody else overcome you can live a happy, fulfilled life after abuse. That is the main yeah. You don't have to be stuck, angry, or holding on to what the past had, uh, but you can move forward yes. and, be, and be very happy in the moment, not wondering if you're ever going to be loved again or it's all going to take place. But like you said, list some of the positives. Matter of fact, these are the four things that I'm going to uh, mention again and that are the first four out of 12 that we're going to talk about over three shows. Uh, The first one is love yourself first. The second is make yourself a priority or number one instead of putting yourself on the back burner and take care of yourself and the things that you need to do. Uh, You also mentioned that we need to observe, rather deserve, we deserve to be happy and loved. Yes. Uh, That we should not uh, just agree that we are these horrible people and that we're just troublemakers and we're the abuser just makes us believe that we're we're just sad and we can't be loved but we are wanted and desired and we have value exactly the fourth the fourth one that you highlighted what's the word it starts with the e how did you call it ego i'm going to i'm going to put develop and healthy egoism put yourself first by making a list of your positive traits yes so don't don't try to sit there and think of only the bad things that you don't do. Okay, you can, they can make a list for that, but you're really saying lean into what what are your positive qualities? Yes, what are your positive qualities and also in daily life? Find out every single day if somebody wants something from you, what does it benefit me? What do I get out of it? You know, that you don't always make somebody else's needs Priority number one. Right. Exactly. By making, by making somebody else's needs priority number one, it's one thing to be self-sacrificing. If there's a disaster, you may need to go grocery shopping. Those are balanced ways to put uh, someone else's needs ahead of yours. But we can't attend to someone else if we really have not truly taken care of our basic needs. And understanding ourselves emotionally yes. is what you're highlighting. Yes. Uh, I, simple example. This is what I always told my children. Imagine yourself in an airplane, and they always said, put the, um, the mask with the oxygen on yourself first mm-hmm. before you put it on your child. And if you translate into that, into the daily life, you have to make sure that my needs are covered first before I can attend to my children's needs or to my friends or partner's needs or business partner's needs. I have oxygen mask on myself first. Make yourself priority number one. Get that emotional oxygen for yourself first before you can be in a position to support someone else while they have their mask on. Exactly. Yes. I'm telling you, homie, don't play that. I love it. I'm telling you, you better, I need... Come on, you got to get a T-shirt. You know what? You're connected with Chance TV. Yes. So I'm asking you, Chance TV, please get her a shirt that says, homie, don't play that for her shows on Monday. And so <laughs> just, I, I, I love the work that you're doing. I love the energy that you put out. Everyone is not going to always understand us, but uh, I'm just going to say this and just bear with me. Uh, I, I have friends that, that knew uh, Prince uh, quite well and, and talked with him and 
and and uh, know him, knew him. And one of the things that was interesting is to find out that he never gave energy into people trying to understand him. You see, yes. Because yes. he knew he knew that his creativity and who he was would be understood by the people who wanted to understand him. Exactly, I totally agree with that. I totally. Yeah. If yeah, instead of trying to convince the people that all they want to do is criticize and, and nitpick and say, "Well, that person didn't do that," well, you know, Sabine is like this; she should be like this, or yeah. Paxton, the show should be this. But people can be that way. But you have told us today, reminded us that we need to accept. Uh, who we are and the positive qualities and only associate with those who can appreciate that. Everyone else, let them just do what they're going to do. Exactly. And don't care about other people's opinion so so much. You know, it's like you're going, let's say, to a smear campaign uh, that I've been through. Yeah, okay, you have your opinion about me and you're entitled to your opinion. Yeah. You know, but it doesn't change anything about the person that... <laughs> I am. Yeah. Not so much about other people's opinions, no. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. I gotta. I gotta do this. Here we go. All right. You ready? You know this is coming. But I told you I had three things. We have gone fifty-six minutes, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna end the show here on these three questions that I have for you. <laughs> you had no idea. All right. Here we go. First one, Sabine. If you had to describe. Sabine, to someone who has never met you, they've never met you, they've never watched your show on Mondays, as you on Chance TV, they've never, they know nothing about you, and they're going to meet you, but they ask you, they don't know you're Sabine, they go, so this Sabine lady, you know, tell me what she's like, how would you begin to tell this person about Sabine? Basically, I'm just a really good, caring person. I'm the best friend you can have because I got your back, you know, and I'm <laughs> that I really, I really do. And I am very creative. I'm just a fun human being, you know, like. <laughs> okay. So, so you're a good, loyal supporter. You're loyal. Absolutely. You're, 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 uh, you're funny. You're fun. <laughs> yes. And, uh, one thing is for sure, you're not boring, correct? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> okay, now that's that was that was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, okay, no wait, I got two more questions. I got two more questions. I'm not gonna. Okay, so here goes second second question. You ready? Here we go. When it comes to you describing, I need you to do this right now. I need you to describe what music does to you and your body. I want you to describe the best that you can what music does to your body. What music does to my body is very simple. It, makes, it puts me in a happy place. I actually can feel music in every part of my body, especially in the soul. It, sometimes it is so touching. I can I can feel it. I, sometimes tears are coming. It is really. Wow. It makes me. I just feel music. It's also an aphrodisiac, you know. So. Don't start no trouble on this show. Don't <laughs> get me shut down. Don't 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 shut don't shut the chocolate guy down so fast. <laughs> this ain't the Breakfast Club. You got to go on their show and talk. About it's getting hot in here. Okay. This ain't. This is not the Steve Harvey show. This is this is just a. Little tiny, little tiny show of the universe. Okay, it's little, little. Don't get me shut down now. All right, all right. Don't get. Hey, when we when when we when we open up our YouTube channel, then you come on and, and do that. I got more leeway. Instagram will shut me down if I say the wrong thing. All right, so that's what music does to you. Now, last question. Of course, you did not see coming these three questions. Here's the last one. As a woman. Many times you have been ignored and paid no attention. And at certain times in your life, no doubt, you receive attention that you didn't want from men or others. 
when it comes to you living your life right now, who is it that you appreciate attention from? I appreciate attention from creative people, from artists who are on the same level that I am. Because I basically I'm a designer and I love being around creative people who are emotionally balanced, who are nice people, you know. And this is, I only accept uh, creative people, nice people and supportive people. So if you are walking this planet and you are a creative person who's emotionally balanced and well-balanced and supportive, then this beautiful woman in front of me is who you need to reach out to. If you are the type of person who can hear a song and it makes your hips move the same way your toes and your elbows start flailing around and it brings a tear to your eye, this is the woman you want to connect with because... Well, homie, don't play that. She hears music you like to you like to move, and that's a beautiful thing. But more importantly, the thing that's amazing about you is your your energy uh, to to be encouraging. You look to encourage people and give them hope. And because of that, um, I'm excited for the next two shows, which will be uh, again. I repeat, November 12th and November 19th, 19th that we're going to do together. Uh, and we're going to go through eight more things that you say make up your principles of life that people need to keep in mind. Because as I've often said about this show, outside of the fact that it's free TV, uh, that it's ghetto therapy. That's what I call it often. I call it it's ghetto therapy. I can say that. I came from the ghetto. But it's, it's ghetto therapy. What did you say? What did you say it again? We look very ghetto. <laughs> Wait. I'm going to tell you truthfully, I didn't do it, as you can tell, but I was going to do it. I was going to put on a hat and put it, put it, I was going to go over the whole rap look and go get some chains. And but I really was going to do it. And I said, no, don't do it because it looks like I'm, I'm making fun of somebody, but I'm not. And then, uh, I don't know, I'd be great if I could get somebody like Ice-T or Ice Cube to be on the show and, and then all three of us to do a show talking about this. This would be great. I have to keep sending them messages, you know, I have to see. Uh, no, you you know you have people that you've met uh, who who surprise you because they're not maybe who you thought they were going to be or because of their music or whatever or maybe you just met somebody and they surprised you by their genuineness. C can you can you tell me just briefly before we go? What is that like for you when you go to interview somebody or you talk to somebody and they kind of surprise you by their uniqueness and the beauty of who they are? What is that like for you when you're doing your interviews or you're talking to people? It's very gratifying just uh, to get some kind of appreciation and some, also some help. You know, sometimes it, it's so, yeah. it makes me, it's uh, grounding, gratifying. Yeah. Wonderful, yeah. 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 It's amazing how. Signing event on the weekend with Kamisha. She she wrote a book and okay. host uh, the event, and she was so nice and appreciated. And uh, just to get a thank you is is wonderful. Some sense of, I love it. I I, I was I was actually going to ask you that when we did the show prep, but I wanted to wait till now because. People can surprise us, can't they? I mean, you, it's, just, it's amazing how many good people there are here on this planet and when yes. we talk to people. Yes. Uh, if we just take the time. Uh, but like you said, keep away from the negative people, right? <laughs> Don't let them in your inner circle. Bad. Exactly. Yeah, sometimes you cannot avoid it because you're working these, with these people. But do not get emotionally attached to these people. Get all the red flags of, of yeah. All right, everyone, whatever you do, everyone, don't miss the next show that we're going to do right now. Time is uh, pushing, and we have to go. We've gone one hour and four minutes, almost five minutes, uh, spinning. And we talked a lot of, we talked about a number of things, and we talked a lot. But when you come back, we're going to go over the next four things that you highlight, and uh, keep keep that that beautiful smile that you have. I just I just love seeing you be happy, 
Um, and I, I really love your accent. You've just been very encouraging to tell everybody to, to be themselves, to relax and enjoy the moment. Very important. Um, I got to go, my friend. I appreciate this a thousand percent. Uh, stay beautiful and stay the same. Um, we'll see everybody later. Thank you for being here for this first uh, episode uh, with uh, Sabine. We got two more to go. Everybody enjoy your weekend. We got one more show left that will be with Leon Walker. We're going to uh, delve into leaving a narcissist and uh, how you can make steps to regain uh, what Sabine is talking about. That is hope and staying focused uh, on being happy. Thank you very much, my friend. Stay beautiful. We'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Love you.